Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that won't nick or snag your nuts. So go to manscaped.com and use code Holly to get 20% off plus free shipping. show everybody welcome back to another episode of holly randall unfiltered i am thrilled today because i have a very special guest who i've been trying to get i feel like for years and now that she's trapped at home in quarantine i finally nabbed her i am talking of course about the one and only phoenix marie <laughs> hi everyone hi phoenix how are you <laughs> I'm good. I can't complain. Life is amazing. How are you? I'm great. I'm actually really good. I'm, I have been having a wonderful morning. I got up this morning and I was very lazy. I didn't do shit. And I read a book on the couch with my dog and it was lovely. And now I'm talking to you. So how could it get any better? I, I agree. I'm all, I'm happy I get to talk to you. I got coffee in hand. So like, we're good. <laughs> Yay. So how are you? Uh, I mean, this is like... The question I have to ask everybody because it's like the one thing that's on everyone's mind. How oh, are you yeah, handling the how are you handling the quarantine? Uh, so I am still full time at work. Okay. Uh, being a medical assistant, uh, I we do hormone replacement therapy. Last mm -hmm. thing we need is a crazy bitch without her meds. So <laughs> we're still essential. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's 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 a necessary like that's medical. So oh, yeah. No, yeah. And so I also do some cool sculpting and I do erectile dysfunction. I do vaginal rejuvenation as just some of the stuff I can do IVs and all that stuff too. But it's more so I have to work. I don't need to work. I could be at home just fucking myself, but no, I have to work. It's yeah. So how, how is it being a medical assistant and then also being like a very recognizable porn star? Because I know a lot of people have a problem with stigma issues where they try to like do another job outside of doing adult and they get blockaded. Has that not been the case for you? You know, it was, it started out as a joke with one of my friends who's a doctor who I actually work for and he lost like some employee and I felt bad. I was like, man, it sucks that you're on hard times, blah, 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 blah. And he's all, yeah. And I'm all, I wish I could help out, you know, cause I had already started learning the cool sculpting cause that was just yeah. where I was going to stay. And he goes, well, you'd have to be at least an EMT in order for this to work. I'm like, Oh, that's it. I'll just go to EMT school. Did that, passed it. Like I, I took my break starting the like winter of 2017 because that was whenever school started. I finished it in six months, became an EMT, started working here full time. We brought on the Gaines Wave. We brought on me full time for cool sculpting. I actually work with Allergan directly as a master trainer. So I travel all around the world helping everyone learn how to cool sculpt. And every single person, even the ones that recognize me, especially with their dick in my hand, are like, by the way, uh, are you Phoenix Murray? <laughs> yeah, I am. And now that you're really, really hard, we can live this fantasy out outside the office, not in the office, okay? Because I have <laughs> a whole bunch of girls up front that are very, they're older. Um, I will say that was one of the stigmas. One, my mouth, I cuss all the time. So I'm sorry if you have to bleep all the fucks, but there's going to be a lot of bleeps. Nope, we don't bleep <laughs> anything. It would be a problem for me too. Okay, good. And so that was one of the things is all the girls in my office, older females for the most part, and their big thing was telling me, hey, listen, like, I hope you know, I, I expect you to be like this and this and this. And I just told them, I don't have to be here. I want to help people. You're not improving my life, me being here. I'm improving other people's. So I got this corner office. It's huge. It's got my bed in it. Like my machines are in it. I don't have to interact with them if I don't want. Over the last three, four or five years now, they've definitely softened up. But I had that stigma for sure. Yeah. Like, don't want, you're just like wanting to be with a doctor. Da, da, da. I was like, oh, no, that's cute. <laughs> you're funny. No, that's not why. <laughs> I have my own one. Oh, it was so funny. Like the first time I ever like started talking to this doctor, because we've been on and off. No, it's not a secret. You guys know this. Uh, mm -hmm. So I 
I was like, yeah, I don't need his money like some of you other bitches. So when they're all staring at me rudely, and then I have his ex-girlfriend working in the office and his daughter. So wow. I get all the work there. So. You got like a little soap opera going on over oh, there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had a swear jar here, like, and they were definitely make me put a dollar in each time. So by the end, I think it was like 150 bucks. And I just finally took the thing and I was like, guess what? It's my money. Fuck it. And I walked away. And then they never asked me to put money in a swear jar again. <laughs> so I just want to go back really quickly to something that you said that you kind of like skated past where uh-huh. you were like, oh, when I have their hard dick in my hand, they're like, are you Phoenix Marie? But you're talking about this in some kind of like medically professional way. I'm assuming that's when you're dealing with erectile dysfunction. Correct. So and how does that even work? Because I know nothing about how okay. one goes into an office and like, how does, what happens? So as men grow older, uh, I will say Johnny Castle is totally cool with me, like BSing that he comes in here. His dick gets hard no matter what. That's not the problem, but he just does it because it kind of makes the ejaculate better, makes the erections better, makes the sensitivity better. Mm. Does make you wider and longer too. So it's just kind of that's just the added benefit. So we brought it on, and he was so sweet to be my like training buddy because I needed somebody who was comfortable to do a training video for the office. Who better than Johnny Castle, right? I was like, hey, you don't mind being naked and being filmed, right? And it's with me. Everyone's like, I was waiting for you to start sucking his dick. I swear. I was like, no. But (laughs) it's just one of those things of guys realize they have ED. They come in and see me. I help tell them what the best plan of action is, I guess is the best way to put it. And then we go from there. So if they have really severe ED, we have something called a PRP injection, which is a P shot, Dr. Reynolds amended. And it's really neat. Like it's the same they use for vampire facials. So if you ever yeah, I was I've heard that before. Okay, so he actually invented that too. And then one day he got intoxicated and he injected his penis, and he was like, "Holy shit, this is amazing!" So we went to Fairhope, Alabama, and actually learned how to do it directly from him. This Mm -hmm. pee shot. So you can use that, and it heals all the valves inside the penis. Wow. So as men get older, circulation's an issue for everybody, right? Especially if we like sugar. So if I have to use an artery, two main arteries called the peridotal arteries to feed that shaft to get hard and there's plaque and platelets, first thing that they can tell they have any heart issues or circulatory issues is ED. So I would basically medically diagnose them with what's wrong. And then we get to the bed part. Now, some guys are like straight up from the get go. Yeah. So uh, I just want to let you know, I know who you are and I'm all, okay. You're about to spend $6,000 to treat your penis erection problem. Like, come on in. I don't care. (laughs) Whoa, you know who I am. I hope you jerk off about this later. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Gentleman come in from California. We're in Vegas, right? He did not tell me that he knew who I was. We we emailed back and forth. He's like, all of a sudden, like, we were, there's a penis, like, pump, like in the old school movies where you have to stick your penis in Mm -hmm. and fill it up, right? And then you let it down, but that's a whole other thing. And he's all, yeah, so pump things fixed. And he goes, by the way, I joined your website. I was like, I'm sorry, what? And my ED was cured. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he, he even said, he goes, everything's working great. Like, I, I really want to sponsor your website. I didn't think that you were going to be the technician to actually do the erectile dysfunction. I thought maybe you were just being paid to talk about it. And I was like, yeah, like, no. Help. Yeah, be the spokesperson. Yeah. And I was like, actually, no, this is my job job. I'm like, well, okay. Porn is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, medical office, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Like Thursdays are like my, okay, if I have to go to LA to shoot, I will. But for the most part, everything is in Vegas right now. So, right. Wait. Okay. So sorry. I just, I need more detail about this erectile dysfunction thing. Cause I just, so you give them the shot and then do they get hard immediately? Like where does the the you holding their hard penis in your hand, where does that part come in? That's what I do. What's funny. So we're going to do just gaze wave, not the P shot. Okay. So the P shot is like five injections into the corpus cavernosum, which are, there's two main arteries that feed the penis. Okay. Right. Okay. So the paternal arteries into the corpus cavernosum. Well, the tip of the penis is the spongiosum. It's a gland. It's where all their sensitivity comes from. So you inject the base of that spongiosum, the head of the penis, and then down the shaft twice, but we do a block because they don't need to feel any pain. So it doesn't get their penis hard. So like the Trimix, the Keverjets, those are the ones that like male performers use on set. Right. Those are horrible for you. They actually right. cause you to get a penis pump, inje- you know, done. And the injections only last at some point 
like one of our very familiar friends that has a penis pump, he was doing the injections three three times a scene to stay hard for like two hours for stills and that. And he said, mommy, like it's, it's painful. Like you don't understand. And then he went and got a penis pump. So they actually also cause peronies. Have you ever fucked a dude with a crooked dick? I think like, so. Mm. Yeah. I think so, so some of the guys, even in porn, and now I know that like, Hey, you inject cause your dick started to curve and it didn't curve before. So when they inject, it causes scar tissue. So I had a gentleman that came in and he literally was 45 degrees mid shaft. So from the base to the mid shaft, it literally broke off 45 degrees because he started injecting with the trimix, like the male talent, some of them use, not all. Right. And it literally kept doing this. And then one morning he woke up and it was completely, so I'm like, oh wow. God. And we, fixed him. we actually got him almost completely straight. I'd say he's more like this, not fully this, but he's more yeah. this. He was so grateful because I mean, imagine you're only four inches total and two of it's going the other way. Yeah. So, but wow. and then when they get hard, I'm just like, okay, that's cool. It's expected. I have guys that pre cum. That's a little bit like, hey, listen. Oh, I see what you're saying. So the them getting an erection is just like kind of a natural reaction to someone yeah. touching their penis. You're not jerking them off to see if the ED treatment no. worked. Okay. It's Got it. Got it. I wish. Come on. I like well, I didn't know if that was a medical thing. If you would need it to test like, to see, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like oh, hold on. I don't know. You're right. No, no, I definitely need to clarify. You're hundred percent right. That was on me. <laughs> but like we have a machine it's called a uh, extra corporal shockwave therapy. It's not electricity or anything like that, but it feels like somebody's studying you on the side and it literally feels like a massage to a guy's dick. So they're just yeah. stoked as fuck. They're like, Oh my God, hold on. Oh yeah. That feels really good. I'm like, and pre come. So one, they know Phoenix Murray's doing it and I'm massaging their dick with this extra corporal shockwave therapy. So they're like, fuck yeah like and now my dicks i don't have ed anymore some of them if it's mental because you know guys are all mental right yeah 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 i just tell them straight out i'm all i can't fix mental problems and i don't mean to be mean but a lot of men have that especially if they had one incidence of ed you remember like how many guys come to set and they're doing great and all of a sudden the girl says something and gets in their head and now they can't get hard the rest of the day I think I feel like if anybody understands what it's like for men to get into that head fuck space and not to be able to get a boner, it's people like you and me because we've seen that happen so many times. They struggle a little bit and then they and then the wheels start spinning and and you can see it while it's happening and they're like, "Okay, just one minute, just one minute. I'll be right back. Go to the bathroom to like watch porn on their phone or something." And you're like, "It's fucked. Oh, yeah. The scene is fucked." Like, cause or, they're, no, or, or it makes them come early because then they get insecure. They don't control it anymore. And now mm-hmm. you're like, so how long is your refractory period? Because I need to know if we're ready to continue or do you need to like be replaced? And then the girls yeah. the fuck because one, we don't like sucking limp dicks for 30 minutes to try and get you hard. I've done it. I'm that go getter on the set. Like if my dude's not getting hard, I will try my best. But when they're after they come and you're like, listen, I'm not here for you to come twice. This is a job. Okay. Now, mind you, if like Johnny Castle came on me twice or like Manuel, I'm going to just wait. Okay. I'm just going to yeah. be there. Yeah. <laughs> still- you know, they're going to come back. Yeah. That's why I don't fuck new dudes anymore. I'm like, yeah, no, I won't deal with that. But I think that's another thing is new guys are definitely the ones and you deal with like the twisties, the babes, the naughty Americas that it's like, oh, we're going to use this new dude today. And you're like, my day is going to be fucked. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah. You know, actually where I experienced the new guy situation, the the most was digital playground because they were always looking for people because they're, they do features. So they were always looking for guys to fill very specific roles based on what the movie was about thankfully twisty's gone back to lesbian only so i don't have to deal with dick with twisties at all anymore wow i didn't even know well i i did a male scene for them yeah so you you recorded me with angel smalls like yeah really well yes we did good (laughs) yes yes that was a great scene um so so yeah so twisties was uh solo girl 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 and then they did boy girl for a little while and then mind geek kind of did this whole like revamping of all the websites giving more them more their own distinct feeling because everything was like it was like every site was trying to be browsers like that was the problem and so they decided like okay let's give every site its own identity so twisties went back to being lesbian only so there's no boy girl on twisties whatsoever anymore do you prefer shooting girl girl or do you prefer shooting solo or do you prefer to shoot boy girl 
it all depends on the performer. It's all about the talent. Um, I, I kind of prefer to shoot solo just because like, that's co- kind of where it came from. And, and I, right. I like the intimacy of being able to work with one person. And yeah. And really focus on making that girl look great. Um, but otherwise, honestly, like, I don't mind girl, girl, or boy, girl. If it's with a great male performer who I know is strong is and is not going to, like, have a problem during the scene, then, like, boy, girl can be easier than shooting girl, girl. If I'm shooting girl, girl with two new female performers who don't understand the rule about looking sideways. Vagina? Would that be the first rule they don't know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking sideways vagina so I can see, that like, can be worse. <laughs> yeah. I, I think this is worse. Uh, uh, yeah. Like, or I don't like, want to get just, my makeup dirty and I really don't like girls. Then why the fuck are you here? Uh, I know. I know that we've all exper- We all know certain people in the industry that are like that. So, um, so yeah, for me, it's, 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 it's anything. It's really the talent. Like if it's good talent, then it's going to be a good day. I don't care what I'm shooting. You know, you're right. What about you? Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm going to be honest. I love the dick. I also love fucking up chicks, like in a fun way, (laughs) flipping and doing all that stuff. I know like I'm probably the only one that should be doing it, especially since I've heard about all the stories of girls getting dropped on their fucking heads because they're trying to have other girls do this that are not strong enough and don't know how to do it. And I'm like, but like girls are great because I I mean, I've been with 652 girls. So clearly I love girls. Wait, is that like a legit number? Yeah, that's a legit number. I actually- Wait, how do you- how do you ca- how did you do that? What do you have some database that you enter every oh, time that you do a scene? So I like sometimes I'll just check it just to make sure I'm not going insane. But like I've done 1,357 scenes mm-hmm. and 652 were just girl girl. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Some of them are a little bit of like the threesome ones, but for the most part, like I've done that many girl girl scenes. Okay. Okay. Like, and then, you know, if I love the threesome ones. I like threesomes because the girls that aren't truly in the girls at least have something to focus on mm-hmm. and i'll make any girl look hot that's fine like i, I don't care and usually that's when they beat up a chick is whenever they come to set and then they go one i got this from piper perry and she totally doesn't care that i say this out loud she's like you're the first old person i'm working with listen oh, you little no. nice old fucker like are you kidding oh no <laughs> And so it was for the Tony T for Brazzers. And he looks at me and he like puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, Phoenix, let's fuck her up. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> she already said she girls and now I'm old. She's going to get it. And like, she was trying to talk to me, be sweet. And like, sometimes I want to get to know the girl before. Usually I just tell them this. I won't take you to any point that you're not okay with. Mm-hmm. If at any point I do something that you don't like, just grab me. And I'm like, and then I figure out like, hey, I'm not really into it. Some of them are very upfront, like, hey, Melissa, a Phoenix, whatever. I don't care. I go by Melissa more in Phoenix these days. Mm. Office, office. They'll be like, hey, uh, I don't like X, Y, Z. I'm like, okay, cool. Next thing you know, I got a heel on their fucking assholes. And they're like, how did that happen? Well, like, that was one of your X, Y, Z's. Better be more clear. <laughs> should be more clear about that. <laughs> it, it's fun, though. Like, And then that's, you know, it, it, that's why it's fun to work with females for me is like, right. I love girls. I'll, I'll eat a girl out all day. I had in my personal life a threesome and she bled all over the bed. And I just looked at her and I was like, and we were a hotel room, of course. And I'm like, oh, that happened. I'm like, and I looked at myself and I was like, I wonder why it's, it was like, you know, the irony taste. And yeah. I, the pennies really about it. It was just in it. Right. And it was her first time with a girl. So she just jumped on me. I was like, hold on. <laughs> Are we doing this? Like, we shouldn't be doing this. We're, we work together. Like, uh, and then it was a good time. So fuck it. Oh my God. All right. I, I want to go back to a scene that you mentioned briefly when we were talking about girl, girl scenes. It was a scene with you and Angel Smalls, which I shot for Twisties. And that was, I guess what they call a lifting scene. And that was like one of the first times I'd ever shot a scene like that. And it was like this new fetish that was like kind of a thing. And you were like the queen of it because you have to be really strong to yeah. do this so can you explain to people what this fetish is and are you still doing it like is it still a thing because it was hot for a minute you know i feel like when i went out like on my break for you know going to school and everything yeah it stopped because there was no one who could do it like i did it so the big thing is for a guy the whole fetish was built around you well <laughs> when you left it was done no like it was i so believe it up, right like so what it is is bodybuilder women 
would lift guys to make them feel small. A lot of men like really strong women. Some like little tiny things and that's fine too. But like most men like really strong women that can handle them. So, and trust me, I can prove that from my fucking DM list and my Twitter timeline. Lift me like Jordy, lift me like Jordy. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. But it's, it was, I did it with Piper and it was a female and she's 70 pounds. And that's something else the bodybuilder females do. It's a very niche thing. And it's really shot well by like Aziani shoots it. He has his like muscle hard body girls. Those are the girls that do that stuff. That's what they do. So I did it with Piper and then the next thing, actually, the, my first scene I ever did it, and I found it, was Nikki Benz's first anal for Brazzers. Long time ago with Abigail, with Abby Brooks. Then mm-hmm. I did this with Piper, and it, it kind of was, it was like noted, right? It was everywhere, but it wasn't a thing. Then they did me with Jordy. And that little fucker doesn't speak English at the time. Like, I love him to death. Everyone knows I love Jordy. But I was like, okay. And Tony's like, hey, Phoenix, I want you to lift this dude. I think you can do it. I'm like, that's a dude. Like, I'm not lifting a dude. Like, how do I even do it? And he goes, do you think you can? I'm all, and by the way, I'm in heels and a skirt and a blouse. And I'm like, I look like a lady. Why am I getting, okay, fuck it. So I tell Jordy the best I can in my broken English. I'm all, hey, I'm going to lift you. And he's like, okay. Oh no, I'm going to lift you, Jordy. And he goes, okay. I'm like, Fine. So I went underneath him and I curl him and I start blowing him, right? So I'm like, you see that pose of me just like blowing this way. So then Mm -hmm. during stills, it was great because I can gently bring him down, right? So onto like, we had like a little bench thing that we had to work with in front of the fireplace. So I gently like let him step down. Well, during the video, I can't gently let him stand down. That just ruins the momentum of it. I guess I went like this and dropped him and he power bombed him. He just like fell out on the fucking bench. I got so much like wrestling. You should be in wrestling. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So then we go to pile driver. Now, usually the females in pile driver, right? Right. Where, like, our legs are over our heads and our asses in the air. So guys can like dip. Best position of all time. <laughs> okay. This mother trucker has to be in pile driver and I'm on top of him. So I'm like, Jordy, pile driver. And I'm like showing him. And he's like, okay. And he goes to step over. And I'm like, no, 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 you. <laughs> and he's like, huh? So I grab him. I just boom, flip him there. And he's like, <laughs> I just, you know, we're, we're on set. I'm getting a little tired. We've done some things. And I guess I did it so fast. Like his eyes were just like, what the fuck happened? I text uh, one of the people from Mind Geek, And I was like, does he hate me? I feel like he hates me after this. And he's like, no. Then I did Connor Cox for Reality Kings. Then all of a sudden, all the females that were ever born, I was doing this too. I did like a, so Angel Small scene, right? We did that one. And then right afterwards, they had me do, I don't like squirt, okay? Mm-hmm. I, that, I have three no's. Don't smack, smack my ass, don't prolapse on me, and don't squirt on me. Mm-hmm. Well, Twisties was like, hey, the Angel Small scene did so good. Let's do Gina Valentina. And I was like, okay, fine. They do not tell me about the squirt. I am hard no squirt, okay? Mm-hmm. Gina comes to set and she's like tired. And I was like, well, she doesn't even seem like she wants to be here. And I was, and again, in my first, I love Gina, like we're girls. But I was like, yeah. she doesn't want to be here. Like sometimes, and just, we, and then, sometimes we don't want to be there. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And she had to drive from LA to Vegas. So I can see yeah. being tired. Right. So then they hand me the script and I had told the Amy like ahead of time, I'm all, I don't do squirt. And she goes, okay, cool. We'll revamp the squirt thing. Well, they left the squirt in and I was like, hi no squirt and they're like oh, okay well just improvise well gina had like been drinking water all day long so she could pee everywhere and so i grab her and i was like the only way we're doing this is if i grab her hold her and she pees that way right Not okay on- gotcha right so again i'm just like nasty disgusting i don't want to be in urine that's not my thing yeah so he pees all over the place that way well she was my maid and then i was like and again, me and Gina hadn't even had a conversation at this point. So I shoved the rag in her mouth <laughs> and I use her as a mop to get all the squirt up. I start spinning her in it. Like as a kid, when you spin in water on the like, you know, slip and slides, I'm like, she's drenched in her own urine. I take it and I run it out in her mouth. Like it was hardcore lifting and guys love it. I don't, I think it's just the fact that you can do it. And then I know that I know some people drop some people in the industry mm-hmm. and I feel like it stopped like I wasn't there who else is going to lift these chicks and dudes I lifted a 150 pound man and flipped them like wow 
Oh, I wasn't supposed to do that. You Don't need like hazard pay for that kind of shit. I do. <laughs> I charge more. <laughs> I remember you said that. You're well, like, yeah, well, I, I mean, it's really hard on your body. Oh, my shoulder. Oh, like, and my big thing is when they have me do it with the new girl who I explain inertia to, and like, hey, listen, object in motion remains in motion unless it gets acted upon by an unbalanced force. And if they go against me, my shoulder hurts. Like, if they have, they had me covered in oil once. I am Sheen. This girl is Sheen, and she doesn't know how to be in place. And I did not drop her because I will never drop a bitch. I won't do it if I if I think she's too big. So I flipped her, and she's starting to slide down my body. And I'm trying to catch her and get her to put her like knees here. I'm like, don't die, no. <laughs> and Vic's watching me like do this, and he is laughing the whole time. He's like, this is fucking ridiculous, Melissa. I don't know why you're doing this. So I was like, why not? And like, there were some people who really didn't get off while filming that. And I understand that because most of our guy directors are like, I want to see you fuck a bitch. I don't want to see you flip a bitch. Right. Also too, I think like, I know for me as a director, I would be the whole time like, Oh my God, is there going to be a worker's comp claim? Is she going to drop her? Am I going to have to take him to the hospital? Like, you know, I'm just thinking about like liability issues. Did you feel that way with me? Just asking. No, 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 no. That was fine. I mean, I don't remember you doing anything that was like super insane. Like, no, I just you know, you didn't use her her as a human mop, so um, I wasn't terribly worried. (laughs) It was great though. Like that scene was like, and it did. It was number one on Twisties that year. So obviously, dude loved it. it. Of course, random shooting people like. I think also too, like people love seeing something that's so you un- that's so unique and different. It's like porn has been shot so many times, so many different ways. It's oh, yeah. it feels like there's nothing new to do. You know, we've done it all. So when there's something new and different, I think people really jump on that because people, you know, they like want variety. Oh yeah, and then like for me, it, it's something unique. One, like I had Derek Pierce come up to me one time, and he's like you know, way to go. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, Phoenix 2.0. I'm like, How, what are you talking about? He goes, no other chick's been in this 13 years and revamps herself. Like yeah. you are a hot commodity. Not like you were ever not, but he goes, you have something no one else can do. You have mm-hmm. something that is totally your niche. You're bringing, like when I started doing, uh, I did, uh, this sounds wrong if I say it like that, but it's not. Like I did my first trans scene with Aubrey Kate. No mainstream girl was doing trans at that time. None. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. hey, listen, I'm going to do it. And it kind of made it like, okay, well, we can all do it. And we're not worried about getting work. Because remember back in the day, you did anything oh. trans with a switch guy or anything that by gentlemen, you couldn't work in the mainstream industry. You were shunned, right? Yeah. People really don't understand what it was like. I mean, you dated Christian Triple X. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a problem that we had with him all the time. And I really liked the guy and he was a really solid performer, we but can. we would book him with a girl and she would find out that he had done like a trans scene or something like that. Right before and that she or would, anything right. that was questionable. <laughs> anything at one point And she would make me cancel the scene. Mm-hmm. And it was a horrible thing to have to tell him like, look, I'm sorry. Like she doesn't like the fact that like you did something that she perceives to me not be 100% heterosexual at some point in your life. And she doesn't want to work with you. Now, of course, that's always somebody's decision. You know, 100%. you, yeah, you I get, get to I decide who you want to work with, but it was just like, it happened so often. Um, and now it's amazing. Like if you were to cancel a scene because of that, like the social media vitriol that would come rain down on you mm-hmm. would be something else. And you know, like Aubrey Kate's my best friend. Like literally I talk to her all the time. We Instagram, we do all kinds of shit together. And I had always like, I met Foxy my second month in and I'm with Christian at the time. And he's like, yeah. And I'm all, she is so hot. Look at her braces. She's got a fat ass. I'm like, I really want to have sex with her. And he looks at me and he goes, Oh, really? I'm all, yeah. Now, mind you, okay, I am from a very closed-off world, okay? I'm one of 10 kids. My mom wouldn't let me off the block till I was 18, okay? Like, literally down the street. My mom drove me everywhere. She made it so I couldn't get my license, so very protected. So I meet Foxy. I say that, and Christian's like, well, just so you know, she has a penis. And I was like, I am very intrigued because I was naive as fuck. Mm -hmm. all, All I've ever seen of trans was, like, the ones that are a little bit more emasculated, and they're on it like you know some movie and they're sketch as fuck and i'm like can i talk to you foxy and she's like sure why not i'm all 
can I ask you about being trans? I, if, uh, I don't want to seem like an asshole. And she started laughing. She goes, no, come here. It's fine. First of all, we made out because I was tipsy a little bit. And then I just asked her stupid questions that people probably shouldn't ask her. <laughs> and I was just, hey, listen, I'm naive. Can you please understand that and respect that? And I really want to know. And she told me about life. She told me when she started hormones. She told me when, like, she started getting, like, you have to get your face broken. You have to do, like, shave this down. Like, I can't imagine. Like, their lives are hard. So yeah. I just, like, I'm like wow. And I became best friends. She's still one of my best friends too. Like, and everyone's like, well, why are you doing trans porn? Well, at the time I wasn't allowed. You know what I mean? Like you were not allowed. Like if your feeding- agent probably didn't want you to definitely hundred percent. We all know who yeah. that was. Like yeah. it, it was just, you can't do that. And then I had girls and I feel really bad, like saying this, but there were girls who wanted to fuck me, but they wouldn't fuck Christian and Christian would be like, do they not know who you sleep with that night? And I'm like, Clearly they do. Like everyone knew me and Christian were together. We were there together yeah. running off for five years. So yeah. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, babe. Maybe they just really don't like you. And then he got pissed. And you know, like I was still making out with Aubrey and all, Chanel and everybody else that was around. So no one cared really about that. I guess it was just the minute you took someone's dick in your mouth that is more not Gigi, but you know, a girl. Cause I, I found out I'm a Gigi. We're a genetic girl, not a girl. <laughs> Their girls were genetic girls. Right, right, right. Don't hold me with that. I didn't know that. Right. So, okay, I hadn't heard GG. Cis, cis female is the term that I hear all the time. But that's a that's a new one. That's good to know. Yeah. I'm like, right. I have no idea. Uh, Chanel was looking at me and she's like, well, you're just a GG. And I'm like, what is a GG? I'm like, that's why you used to call my great grandma. Don't tell me that. She's like, <laughs> you're a genetic female. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. Thanks. Like, yeah. I'm all, because again, you know, and every year they add something to the LBGQP, what is it? I'm all, I know. That acronym? Just yeah. Like it's okay. more letters. Yeah. And like, I'm pansexual. I find everything attractive. So I'm like, I, I literally, I'm all, not like I do anything crazy, but if I see a person, I don't care if you got a dick, I don't care how you were born. Like if you're hot, I'm going to fuck you. Yeah. So well, I think that's a really healthy way and inclu- wonderfully inclusive way to look at, you know, other people. And I feel like I, I know things are changing because now doing trans scenes are are very commonplace. And in fact, uh, I feel like if you refuse to do, it's like the opposite now. If you refuse to do a trans scene, I think you get ostracized as opposed to before. If you did do a trans scene, oh, yeah. you know, people are kind of like, well, why wouldn't you? do that why wouldn't you be more inclusive you do guys and girls it's kind of like a combo we're coming back to it's your body your choice i don't feel like i should judge somebody who chooses that and like you said they will get judged they'll be like hey so and so decided decided not to do it because you know it's all gossip and porn and it's like yeah but that was her body her choice why are you being mean like interracial scenes like there are a lot of girls when they start out that are stupid, you know, in my opinion. And they're like, Hey, I won't do my first IR scene until I've already done all these X, Y, Z's. Right. Mm-hmm. And then now, and there are girls who've never done IR and they're still mm-hmm. super famous. I don't think it's my right to judge them. Like, Hey, listen, I think you should be sucking all the dicks. Like, I don't care what color it is. Like, let's go. Yeah. But they have a thing. They're like, Hey, listen, I just don't do IR on camera. Doesn't mean I don't have sex with black guys off camera, but I definitely won't do it on camera. Cause my fans, I'm like, why i don't understand and like for me again i don't understand it but for them that's how they are and they're like this is just who yeah I am. this is my brand and that's another thing is you don't know if they like trans girls off camera but their brand says i can't do that right right or i mean they could also just not be attracted to that person and right. to insist that people have sex with someone that they're not attracted to i mean I don't know. It's such a weird debate to have. And it, 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 cause you're right. People absolutely, it's like this strange battle between freedom of choice, ownership of your body. And then it's like leaning towards this incredibly PC culture where we should be all inclusive and we should love everybody as they are. And both sides are right. You know what I mean? Like you should be able to make your own choices and fuck who you want. And we should be more inclusive and embrace everybody. So it's like this weird battle between these two things and neither side is necessarily wrong. It's just right. like, which it's, I don't know. Well, fair, yeah. I'm all, and you know, that's again, like we, we've seen it, right. We've been in this how long. So you've been 20, in, all- it'll be 22 years for me in September. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not that cool, just so you know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm on 13 and a half. Or you're not that old, Phoenix. It could be one <laughs> yeah, or two. I'm like, I'll be 39 in September. It's fine. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I am now, uh, I remember originally when I started seeing girls who were born the same year I graduated high school, that was devastating. And oh. now I'm shooting girls whose moms are the same age as me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like hold on real quick how old are you yeah oh, no. i know and then you get girls like abella who come up to me first thing like she'd always wanted to work with me she she was like idolized nikki benz and me and that's awesome and she knows i love her yeah, she's my mini but like you don't come up to a girl and say hey just so you know i've been watching you since i was 12 <laughs> no no there's an age limit to porn 18 yeah. tell me your and she goes i just turned 19 why would i say 18 <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I mean, that's something, you know, that's a whole other story. Yeah, access true. that kids have to porn and God, I don't know how we solve that. Uh, you know, I think it, it comes down to better parenting. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, they're going to do it anyway, right? They're all right. going to go to the internet. They're going to find it. It's educating your kids before the internet educates them. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, the world is changing and we can't deny that. And yeah, there's a lot of responsibility that um, needs to be shouldered by the parents. Yeah. And it's really interesting that I am going to be in that position soon. Ah. I never thought about that. I'm <laughs> like, wow, I'm going to have to raise a person and like, like teach them to do the right thing. That's weird. <laughs> no, it's going to be awesome. Like you're going to do amazing. Listen, you're a good person. As long as you're a good person, I feel like you raise good kids, right? Yeah, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And I know you're going to be that doting mom, like, hey, listen, you're going to be with grandma. <laughs> She's going to take one of the girls while she babysits you. And then mom's going to go shoot porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this mom is, this one is retired from porn. So um, you can stay with her. You know, my mom uh, has, she doesn't want to be called grandma. Oh. So she's come up with a name. She wants to be called Suzma. Okay. Suzma. That's her name. Suzma. Okay. I was like, okay. Whatever. Like, whatever you want. Whatever you want, oh, mom. Grandma's like a great title. She says it makes her feel too old. Oh my goodness. She's a legend. Tell her to stop it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, my mom, you can't tell her to stop anything. No, I'm not ever going to know. She'll be my app still. Like I'm good. <laughs> <Love you. laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about Phoenix's browser's contract. We're going to talk about what it's like dating as a porn star. Maybe what a fan could do to possibly, possibly date Phoenix and, so much more. So hang on. We'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Do you or your partner desire a pair of smooth hairless balls, but you don't want to bring a razor down there because you don't want to damage your crown jewels in any way? This is where Manscaped comes to the rescue. Their electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0, has proprietary skin safe technology that will not nick or snag your nuts, guaranteed. And plus, they have so many other products to offer. They have stuff like their Crop Reviver and their Crop Preserver, which helps your balls not only smell amazing, but also prevents them from chafing, sticking, or sweating. So if you or somebody in your life wants to up your genital game and you don't want to use the same trimmer that you use on your face down there, make sure that you go to manscaped.com, use code Holly and get 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com, use code Holly for 20% off plus free shipping. So Phoenix, you recently signed a contract with Brazzers. Um, what brought that about and why? <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny. I, two years out, right? Like I wasn't shooting in that two year time at all. And, oh, sorry. Well, my Siri wants to know what we were talking about. Shut up, Siri. Um, <laughs> so Brazzers and I have always been family, like 100%. Mm -hmm. I took the two year break. They approached me and we were joking around about me coming back like the first AVN because I signed for them anyway, even though I was not contracted. And I was like, hey, listen, I don't know. And they're like, well, we miss you. We love you. Like, we still want you to come to the events. And that's fine. I can still do events and be Phoenix Marine. That's totally cool. And then the next AVN, which was 2019. I was there, I'm signing, I'm having a good time. And I really like seeing all the new girls, seeing all the new guys and like, I'm all, I really want to have sex with my friends. I'm all, I missed my friends. 
you know, and everyone's like, we miss you. And I'm like, I miss you too. I really want to uh, know. <laughs> and then <laughs> I, I, I told them in January, I was like, hey, listen, this is kind of what I want to do, right? Because my OnlyFans is doing great. So this is kind of my things that I want. They originally were like, hey, listen, you know, out of a range. We love you. Like, maybe if you want to reconsider, just drop it, right? I'm all, I'll come back to it. Like, it's fine. Left it alone. Like, all my OnlyFans at that point had only been me solo. Nothing else. So July comes up and a different company that likes to contract girls hits me up about becoming contract for them. And I've never shot for this company. And I was like, huh, interesting. I think I know who you're talking about, but that's weird. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely not my brand, in my opinion. Like they're more young, pretty. And yeah. Well, it's also weird they wanted to contract you without ever having shot you before. Well, they know who I am, right? Like, no, I know, but like, why? Well, first of all, why hadn't they shot you before? Oh, were you on break at this time? No, um, I, me and the director have known each other my whole career, and sometimes I can be like, "Hey, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Follow me as best you can." Like, I can't just stage things all the time. Because I get going, what if my arms get tired? I'll drop somebody. I don't want to do that. So, like, you know, I move around a lot. You know, you've shot me, right? Oh, yeah. So he didn't like that so much. And he didn't like that I had a little bit of power with the companies we were shooting for. So he never shot me. And so I left it at that. I was like, hey, listen, I don't care. Then I was approached about it. And I said, well, you know, maybe. And I'm like, you know what? I never shot for you. I have no loyalty to you. I have loyalty to browsers. Let me go ahead and ask them. Mm -hmm. So I readdressed it with, you know, who? And I said, listen, I know we talked about this in January. I got hit up by this company. That's not the one I want. They're offering me my rates that I want. Are you down? And they said, listen, your family, there's no fucking way we're going to let them get you. Like, we're doing this. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. And then I helped Manuel get his contract with Brazzers. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, my first scene back, September, right before my birthday. And I wanted to be Manuel. And they're like, perfect. We just got him contracted. You're good to go. So it just kind of all fell into line when it needed to, right? Like, yeah. now I got my first thing back with Manuel. I, then I got Marcus Dupree. Like, I've only had the best talent in my life. Like, right. Oh, sign me up all the time. Thank you. And then I did the big giant orgy for Valentine's Day. Finally got to fuck small hands and hadn't had a chance to fuck him. So He's great, isn't he? He's so sweet. I love him. Yeah, I know. He's the nicest guy. And his dick stays hard, so... Yay! <laughs> like, you know, I tell new dudes when I meet them, I'm really fucked up. I tell them, "Hey, listen, I'll see you at like 200, 300 scenes." They're like, "What do you mean?" I'm all, "You don't, you can't even handle me at like 300 scenes, but I'll give you a shot." And they're like, "That's a little cool Phoenix Mall." No, I'm just being honest. Like, you're gonna either come early or you're not gonna get hard, and it'll just be ridiculous. Like, give yourself some yeah. time with new girls. Have your first like girl shitting on you experience because you won't have that from me. Like. <laughs> And then they always just look at me like, okay. And then I had like Seth Gamble because he's my bestie, right? Yeah. guy. I did a scene, scene with him for Bang Bros where it was just a jerk off scene, right? Because they had their like mano jobs. Mm -hmm. Didn't fuck him at all. Okay. So it took 12 years of my career to finally have sex with him. I was like, hey, who's down with me lifting him? That's a big guy, but not too big because they didn't want me to use like the standard guys I always already lift. And they're like, well, Seth said you can do it. I was like, I can lift Seth. Okay, fuck it. Lifting Seth, who's 200 pounds, is not an easy task, okay? Yeah, I was going to say, he's not like a no. huge guy, but he's built. Like, he's yeah. fit. I had to lift Seth. That was fun. And like, and I did it, right? Of course. But it, it's like, I don't know. I loved it because I'm all, okay, I'll just lift Seth and just blow him. And he's like, I'll wait however long I have to wait to make sure we work together. I was like. See, that's a good guy. I like him. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. So are you like, does it, I mean, you, you intimidate people for sure. And you intimidate new guys for sure. So like, how do you, how do you handle that? Like, do you get paired with new guys and they just like, how do you manage it? Or do you just, I mean, you, I know you said like, especially with your browsers contract, I know that like mind geeks really great about really being responsive to contract performers and letting them make a lot of their own decisions. Um, and I have that. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But really like previous to that, um, how did you handle shooting with new guys who were maybe intimidated by you? So I'm really mean. I had a yes list from the second year in porn. I felt like I paid my dues. I was like, these are the dudes I'm fucking. Cause they can handle me. Like, 
I I dealt with like Carlo Carrera when he was brand new, right? And like he's good now, but at the time, like he came early. Like your Mr. Marcuses, I would come inside you and not tell you. Like I had been through the guys that I was like, okay, these are the ones I'm gonna fuck, and I'm done. Like you can't add to my list. Like any other scene that was coming up, I was like, listen, you got Prince and Lex, Shawn Michaels. There you go. Right? Like, that was it. And they're just like, well, what if we want... I'm all, no, listen, I'll take all three and all my holes. That's great. But, like, these are my guys. Because I love them. They respect me. It's not ever, like, an interracial thing. All my, like, I got Manuel on my list. I got Mark Wood on my list. I got Johnny Castle on my list. Uh, Scott Nels, Karen, like, all the Brazzers guys. I just couldn't handle the new dudes anymore. I was like, they're just going to come early. and mm-hmm. Or they're not going to hard. And I just don't have the time for that. And I don't want to fuck anyone that doesn't want to fuck me. And vice versa. Yeah. I think it's also fair too. I mean, you only want to deliver a good scene and you know that you're not going to be able to deliver a good scene with a new guy. And I mean, I'm with you. I hate shooting new male talent. Like I won't do it unless the only time like I book a new guy is if somebody like recommends him to me or a girl like requests him. And even then I got to kind of like check him out and decide like how I feel about it. But yeah, I'm the same. Like I hate shooting new talent because it's really a difficult job and it takes guys, yeah. the ones that are in the industry, it usually takes them a while to get to that point where they're solid. It's like a whole like mental fucking mind oh, yeah. Jedi yoga trick. Was it, what is it? Jedi's with the force and shit. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly I'm a big star Wars fan, but you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, <laughs> It's, it's difficult. It's really hard. Uh, you know, but luckily, like you said, you get to pick and choose now, right? Like, you're all, hey, I- I'll try this dude, but if he doesn't work, I have my backup on call. You're like, Ramon, you want to show up? Thanks. <laughs> See you <Yeah>. there. <laughs> Ramon. You know, we've known Ramon. My mom used to shoot Ramon. He was 18 years old. I know. He's been in porn forever. How come I didn't remember that? Forever. I know. It's amazing. I love Ramon. He's great. He's still, still one of my favorite videos that I love to watch is, did you ever see his Zorro movie? No, I have not. <laughs> He's probably going to kill me for telling you this, but go Google, like you can find the trailer, like the Safer Work trailer on like YouTube. I'm and there's this part where they like want him to dance like Zora. Oh God. It's so it's like my fit. It's yeah. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to do this, but oh, it's so funny. You can send me a link to the site. Cause I guarantee he knows exactly where it is. I'm gonna be like, send me your Zorro. He'll be like, what are you talking about? Don't ask questions. You don't want to know. Just send me my shit. Oh God. It's such a bad, it's so bad. Listen, it was before his English was really well, I'm sure. Right? It's not even, it's not him. I mean, look, like to try to, to honestly duplicate um, a very expensive production in porn oh, yeah. and not like kind of make a joke out of it, which this was not trying to make a joke out of it. But did it anyway. Really, really tricky. Um Ugh. I mean, you know, those mainstream movies cost a lot of money and porn can't afford to do that. Right. So the I'm only way that you can... Maybe, just not now. Yeah, I mean, the only way that you can really do parodies is to kind of, in my opinion, try to sort of make a joke out of it. In yeah, look at Wood Rocket. That's their, like, specialty, right? Right, so, exactly. I watched their Die Hard... I watched their Die Hard parody and that was great. There's, like, this really long scene... Where they're like shooting at each other, and there's like dildos. I think are they shooting dildos. There's dildos flying everywhere. It's just like so ridiculous, but it's great. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like it's what it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed right. To be. Yeah, it's like about the premise, but yeah, let's interject some humor into it. Let's not try to take ourselves too seriously when it comes to that, because like we just don't have the budgets to make mm. it look. I agree with it you. Look. It's not worth it. Like, and not only like that, but it's like make something original. Like mm-hmm. they did nine and a half weeks, Crawford did, right? And like, I, and I gave him the idea thinking, hey, listen, I look just like Kim Bixinger like a little yeah. bit, but okay. And he like had it with somebody else and that's fine. But it, it just, you can't get that, that passion, that cinematography, like the water falling, them just dripping what fucking that like it thing yeah. with just porn budgets. It's just not going to happen. You're right. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard. Performers that are good looking, that like each other, and they definitely didn't do that. And I was like, I don't want casting is casting is everything. Casting is everything for sure. Um, so what's it like as Phoenix Marie to date? 
<sighs> well, I mean, like, are you I, ever on any dating apps or anything like that? No or? dating apps. <laughs> that would never happen. I will never be on a dating app. Uh, I have dated in the industry, right? Like I said previously, I dated Christian for five and a half years. Five, five and a half. I don't know. At this point, it's all blurred together. Um, and it affects work a lot. Like I dated Ramon Amar in the beginning. Like actually, before I officially started dating Christian, I dated Ramon when he came over. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, thirty days of fucking seven times a day, and then we broke up. Like in the sweetest way ever. Like you would never even like he makes me breakfast every morning. He cooks me dinner. Like. He is the most romantic sweetheart of a guy. He just wants to take care of people, especially in relationships. And then we were staying at like, cause I had just gotten into the in- industry and he had just gotten over here. I think I was in like six months and it was like right before I started doing anal on camera and everything else. So Ramon and me are living at like renting rooms in this big house Well, they were selling the house in 30 days from like that point. And we're like, Oh shit, we just connected. Da, da, da. He made me breakfast. He kissed me. He goes, are you okay, mommy? And we just fucked the whole night through, right? We're fucking seven times a day going to work, fucking some more. And he's like, okay. He gave me a kiss, and we, like, dissolved. And I was like, okay. And then I started being Christian. But Ramon didn't care who I fucked. He was just like, go ahead, mommy, whoever you want. I'm like, thanks. No problems, no stress. Then I did a Christian. And again, that backlash from people thinking, oh, well, X, Y, Z, whatever they wanted to think of him. And then he wouldn't let me work with certain people because he felt like, it was inappropriate. They were disrespecting him or anything like that. Yeah. He definitely would get upset about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you booked me with somebody else that wasn't him, he'd be like, what the fuck, Holly, you don't want to do it. And you're like, oh, yeah. Or he'd call and like get, he'd call and want me, like if the girl didn't want to work with him, he wanted me to replace the girl. And I was like, I can't do that. Like the whole. Yeah. Especially not with your company. Girl. Like, are you kidding me? You're like, this girl's really hot. No offense. Yeah. Other day. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's just not fair for us because we're dating in an industry where people like you got Mark Wood and Francesca Lay, right? They're married. They just had their anniversary, right? I'm sure you saw it. Like they've been together so fucking long and they get it. It's go to work with whoever you want, have a good time, come home and you're back in that relationship. It's not carried over anywhere else. Then I dated a director uh, for a minute and that was fun. I think it lasted like 30 days too. And it was kind of funny because it was like, I really like you. I really like you. Like we'd have sex. Everything was great there in bed, like good job. But then it started affecting, like I never got hired for that company again, whenever we kind of just went our own ways, nothing bad. We just did. And I was right. like, yeah. actually, I think I got back with Christian. Sadly, that's what happened there. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and then, yeah, no, it was really bad on and off. But the director still after that point, never hired me again. He was just like, Oh, I can't watch you have sex with other people anymore. Sorry. And I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks. Who else did I date? I dated someone else in the industry. I dated someone outside the industry for sure for three years, two years, three years, like kind of in that cusp area, Uh, you know, again, on and off. I love that you're in porn. I hate that you're in porn. I love that you're in porn. I hate that you're in porn. And I'm like, listen, you're not fucking enough other people. So this is not going to work out. Dated a football player for a year. That was fun. Uh, Dated. I mean, ultimately though, do you think the people that you dated who weren't in the industry, like, do you think that the demise of your relationship centered around the fact that you worked an adult? hundred percent. Just, they were just, they couldn't handle the the thought of you having sex with other men. Not even the thought of you having sex with other men. It becomes like a possession to them. The more they love you, the more they only want you for you. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not, Oh, I can't believe you're a whore. You're going and fucking all these dudes and on set and da, 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 da. And you're like, yeah, but I was doing this same time. And then they'll be like, well, you can fuck girls. Then you go to just fucking girls and then they get even more mad at you. And you're like, Oh, well, are you bi now? Do you only want bitches? Like what? And I'm like, dudes, I can't. And I, uh, the football player, we broke up because I wouldn't spend his money. Cause I had my own. That was like the funnest one I ever had for a breakup. They're like, yeah. So, uh, why didn't you charge the Louis Vuittons to the room? I'm like, cause I'm a grown ass bitch. It's my ABN award show and I'll buy my own shoes. Like, yeah. Do as I find the stupidest reasons to argue with, with you. And you're just like, okay, fine. Like, I don't need to be with you. Have a nice day. For him, it probably would cement the idea that he had some kind of ownership over you. Because I sense that he struggled with a power dynamic with you. Because you're a strong woman. So the idea of not being able to have some kind of power over you, like I bought you all of these things, didn't agree with him. 
Oh yeah. And like, I've never been someone to be bought. I, you know, I got out of the industry and luckily like my OnlyFans pays my rent and everything else, but it was like, okay, I'm out of the industry. Like there's no boys in my life. I'm just doing school stuff. And you know, again, like I've been on and off with the doctor here, <laughs> which was, is great. Like we we get along amazingly and sex is amazing. And again, that was another thing is like, I was out of the industry and he kind of liked it that I was out of the industry. And then I told him, I want to get back in. And he said, well, I don't know how I feel about it. And I'm like, that's fine. But you met me as a porn star. You met me as Phoenix mm-hmm. Murray. You had me in the office as Melissa all these days. I'm going to go be Phoenix on the other ones. And I'm not affecting your work. I'm not affecting like my cells or anything else like that. And he's just like, okay, I guess you're making your decision. I'm like, yeah. And then we broke up and then we got back together and then we broke up and yeah, it is what it is, aka why I'm doing this in the office, and it's everybody's out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that there is like a a struggle. I think one of the the hugest problems with like monogamous relationships is is jealousy in a sense of ownership. I mean, I'm in a monogamous relationship. I've only ever been in monogamous relationships, but the difference between like my previous marriage was he really did like want to own me in some way. Like he would get very jealous of me just having male friends um, and that kind of thing. And then, and my current husband has like zero jealousy issues, like absolutely none, like never questions me, like has no desire to own me, has never tried to behave in that way whatsoever. Actually, the other day he said to me, um, it was really sweet. He said, I forgot what brought this up, but he said, one of the things he said, I fell in love with you because you're the strongest woman I know. Oh, he said, I That's that. why I love you because you're so strong and you can take care of yourself. And like, mm-hmm. you don't need me. Like, I mean, I need him, but I don't need him. That's the thing. Like I finally come to this point in my life where like, if we broke up, I'd be devastated because I love him, but like my life wouldn't end. Like right. I could live without him. I don't, I could live without anybody. And it took me a while of me being single and finally coming to that conclusion where I was like, I actually don't need a man in my life to be happy. And then I found the right person, you know? I love it. No, I get it. Trust me. Like, that's where I felt like the doctor is that guy. But then, like, you know, sometimes that possession thing comes in and I'm like, it is the biggest turnoff to me. Like, I like the fact that you like that I was going to set and having sex and then coming home to you and then you were fucking me afterwards. Like, I don't know. I liked it. Not like cuckoldy, but like the fact that I was a lust object turned him on. And like, he had no idea who the fuck I was at all. Like I met him at JC's birthday party and it was like, how is this doctor dude that just called me fat? The fuck? You know? And then it just ended up being like, Hey, listen, we've been in on and off for like five and a half years. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Relationships but again, are so hard. I mean, <sighs> they are. I hate it. <laughs> Now that we've talked about how difficult it is to date, how could a normal everyday fan date you? Would that ever be possible? And if it was, how would they approach you about that? Um, I think a big thing is not being a fan. <laughs> like It's really hard for me to be with somebody who's a fan of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've only been with guys who aren't fans of me, actually. And it's really funny because like even the football player one, he's like, you're not my type. And still text me till today, like, hey, I wish I could see you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, I don't want to be that, hey, listen, I have Phoenix Marie as my girl. And I feel like that's what happens if they've already met you and know you as Phoenix. Mm-hmm. If a guy hides it from me, that's a whole other thing. Like the one I had, like that two and a half year, like relationship one with a regular guy. He was a fan. He's like, oh, I didn't realize you were in that camper scene. I love that scene. I'm like, so you did know who the fuck I was. Like, why are you lying to me, right? It still worked out. But again, it started out funny games. And then it was like, no, I don't want you to be that person. And I'm like, and I feel like that happens with fans too. Well, what do you mean you're still going to go have sex with XYZ? Yeah, I'm going to go take Johnny Castle's dick down my throat right now. Got to go to work. Bye. You know, it just... I, I don't know if I can. I, I definitely have without knowing it, dated fans, but I don't know. I'm like, it's nothing against you guys. If you know me, don't say you know me. Don't act like a super fan. Just be very cool. Like, hi, how are you? Oh my God, you're pretty. Da, 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 da. And I can treat- tell if you watched me though, just so you know. Treat, 
treat you like a human being. Yeah, but they don't know how. Like, and, and I get it. Like, if I were to see Jude Law pass by me right now, I'd be like, "Hello, sir. I yeah. just wanted to fuck the shit out of you." Tom yeah. Hardy, hi. Shout out. I'm sliding my DMs. That's cool. But that, that's <laughs> where you know, and you can't hide the fact that you are so excited by that person, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you met somebody you wanted to fuck that was famous. Yes. Um, let's see. I mean, well, I did have this experience with, okay, I, de- I didn't want to have sex with him, but it was a fan. Everyone's uh, so I knew my, Anthony Hopkins okay. is married to a woman who used to work for my mom. Oh, how cool. Yeah. So, um, we once went to his house for lunch Hmm. And um, you know, like Anthony Hopkins, like Silence of the Lambs, yeah, like you think no, of him in all no. these different character ways, and and meeting him and having lunch with him and talking to him as a human being was a was a surreal experience. And it was, you know, and the whole time, of course, I'm thinking in my head, like act normal, act normal, act normal. Um, and I think I acted normal, but it, it it's but it's you so hard that. to get that out of your head, you know? Like, this is an incredibly famous person. Like, how do I ever treat you like a normal human being? How do I ever see you that way? And, um, you know, I feel like for celebrities, it's got to be really difficult because you never know, like, who loves you for who and who just mm-hmm. wants something from you. Like, Money. I think people are also confused about their own motivations in terms of like what they want from you. So I could see that you probably deal with that a lot yourself. Did your hubby know who you were when you met him? No. Okay. How do you take, no, I'm, you I'm super lucky. Like I'm not that famous, like at all. Like okay. I, I appreciate that, but I'm not, I'm really not like it, I never get recognized walking down the street ever. I buy um, that. I think they do this. I swear to I God. I swear to God. I know like, so if you don't want to say that you're famous like that, maybe you don't feel like you have the following. So when you're taking photos with me, Alexis, Texas, all these big name girls, you don't think these dudes recognize you? Okay. So yeah. So within the industry and if they're super fans of like you guys, then yeah, maybe, but just like out in the general public, like when I go to conventions, people know who I am. People stop me, but out like in the regular world, Never. I feel like never they never happens. I think they just don't tell never you. I, I definitely. The only thing I do get, the only thing I get sometimes is people will look at me and be like, "You look familiar. Where do I know you from? Are you on TV?" And I'll be like, "I don't know." And then eventually, like they figure out they saw me in the Hot Girls Wanted uh, documentary. Oh, yes, that's, that's true. if I ever get recognized, it's because of that. Um, but otherwise, never. Really? And I like it that way, honestly. Okay, so what did he say when he found out? If you don't mind me asking these questions. Oh no, I don't mind. Um, he didn't care. Nice. He didn't. He was like, "Oh, that's cool. That's like why I love him, and and why being with him is so great." Like he really, he he cares about my career in terms of he wants me to be happy and fulfilled and do well, but he doesn't actually care about my career. Like I could okay. be. Yeah, it's like your um, career choice is your career choice. I could be a school teacher and he would feel the same way about me. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, and even like, e- even like the girls that he, like, I know that it's funny cause we never talk about this, but I, I know he watches porn. Like, obviously like he no, knows who certain girls are, but like, we never really talk about it. Like what porn he watches what you know what I mean? Like, and obviously I, I have no problem are with you it. Afraid of that? I think he's on. Un- oh, I don't care. My last no, boyfriend. It could be like was- a weird situation when that girl's on your set and you're like, hey, my hubby likes you. <laughs> it de- that doesn't bother me at all because for okay. me, like, I can, I know the distinction between like jerking off to somebody because they're hot and they're a great performer and they fulfill a fantasy and then like real life. Like, I know the difference between the two. So I don't ever feel threatened by like my porn star girlfriends and like my significant other. Never, 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 never. And if anything- I have to go and ask him, be like, hey, listen, Phoenix Marie is making me do this. I need to know what you watch whenever you jerk off. And then say, also, if you lie to me, then we can't be together anymore. And then just rub your belly. (laughs) So then he has- And we're getting divorced (laughs) and you can come see the baby on the weekends. (laughs) You know what's really funny is I literally think he just got home. 
because I can see hey, Tommy. I got a for you. Come here. <laughs> Our other dog is like got his ear pricked. I almost can guarantee you that he just oh got home. Oh my goodness! I hope you are him right now. <laughs> He's probably just like put back and be all, "Hey, babe, question: Who you watching? Fuck, just wondering." Phoenix said I had to ask. It's not my fault. <laughs> do it do it he won't, he won't answer i don't think he'll answer he won't answer he's i don't know he's kind of like private about that kind of stuff but i think okay so do you like it that way because here's my thing i feel like when i know what you jerk off to i know something that maybe you haven't tried sexually with them mm. and then it, like i've dated guys where you would never know like they really wanted to get paid they really wanted to you know have their ass play with they wanted to get dominated Okay, if they're dating me, maybe, but whatever. Like, they don't say that outright. And then I find out what they watch, and I'm like, oh, you really just want to get fucked in your ass. Why didn't you tell me? And I'll, like, surprise them when they come home, because I secretly look at their search history, and I'm like, hey, listen, you like this shit. Why don't you just tell me? And it becomes, like, a fun turn on, like, oh, my God, look, she's my fantasy now. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it could also ruin it, but, like, some people, I don't know. Obviously, again, being pansexual, I don't care what you watch. Like, I had a guy that, like, loved men fucking men i was like cool mm-hmm. it's like i like to watch two giant cocks going each other too it's great thanks there's <laughs> but, something very hot about gay porn i mean there's something uh, very like ma- oh hi khaleesi okay yeah he must have gotten home <laughs> gone upstairs so he didn't walk through lame. because Come the on. dog that he took with him <laughs> just came oh there he is he's coming he's coming hi baby oh Aww. Are those for your mom? Aww. Our moms? He brought flowers. Aww. Good job. Good job. Oh, you got one for me because I'm a mother? Oh! Yes. Good job. Oh my gosh. She's a keeper. I'm happy. How cute. Now ask oh him the question God. after he gave you the flowers. He just went back out to the car because he went grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to avoid asking him. I know it. He, uh, he will... F- yeah, I don't think he'll answer. I, you know, but we can always just ask. And if he doesn't want to answer, you can be like, uh, I don't want to talk about it right now, babe. And just be like, okay, we'll talk about this later. No. <laughs> we can, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I could always cut it out too. Yeah, um, it was, like, I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, we're, you know, we're towards the end of our interview anyways. So, oh. hey, babe, uh, I'm interviewing Phoenix Marie and she has a question for you. What's up? She wants to know what kind of porn you watch. He says he doesn't watch porn, he watches CNN. Okay, lies, lies, lies. I told you he wasn't going to say. Ask him why he doesn't even want to talk about it. She wants to, do you want to talk to him? I mean, I just want to just say, Phoenix wants to know why don't you want to talk about it. Phoenix wants to know why you don't want to talk about it. I mean, I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, you go to 31 Flavors and whatever your flavor is that month, you kind of go with. Okay. I don't know. Did you hear that? 31 yeah, flavors? So what's the craziest thing you've watched? He is not going to answer that. <laughs> she wants to know what the craziest thing you've watched is. Don't say me picking up a dude. Don't say me picking up a dude. Uh, I mean, he said he can't think about it off the top of his head. Okay. I'm all, it's fine. Ask him if he likes hentai porn. Just for me. Just so he could be like, same if you like hentai porn. Oh, fuck no. He I says, mean, he says, fuck no. That's because he doesn't fuck these I, bitches. You know, they really are. I like, I like anti porn. I do too. <laughs> this is why we're here. That's because we can't watch. <laughs> yes. Is it, is it kind of the same for you where like you can't watch people because like your life is people and, you know, like we're so jaded that it's almost like it has to be something that's like not even human to. Like, I, I think some of it is that uh, you can watch girls cry and say no. That's a big turn on for me. It's mm-hmm. so like watch a girl the non-consent. Dominated. Yeah, big yeah. time non-consent. Yeah, hundred percent. And like you know, we can do that sometimes at kink. We can do it sometimes like, oh, listen, just call me mommy, but really I'm your stepmother or whatever. Fucking bullshit. But that to me is not as odd as like just having a girl just get overtaken by guys and they're like crying like no no and these hard dicks are coming at her uh yes why do you think that you like why do you think that you like that kind of porn because so many people assume that only men like 
like what we call consensual non-consent porn because like obviously there's strict rules and guidelines before right. a responsible company shoots that kind of porn and make sure that like you know the girl actually can say no um at some point if she feels like it but some people are really into that whole like non-consensual thing and a lot of women have rape fantasies and are into that kind of porn but people don't want to believe that they they want to believe only men like that because they want to perpetuate the idea that like that kind of dynamic can only exist in like a true rapist scenario so I, I feel like do you know why you like that i know why i like it um one is i'm a very dominant female and the idea of being overtaken by a man and kind of just like picked up and fucked hard and just like destroyed and feeling that like just overwhelmness is great. It's a release. When you don't have to be dominant, you just get fucked. Like, it is amazing. Like, I just want just to be attacked by three guys and just over dominated by two, like, really strong ones and one that just, like, slams you the whole time. And I'm like, yes, that's all I want. I just want to feel like their, their sweatiness on me. I just, I think it's hot to be dominated. I don't think it yeah. has to be about the consensual part, but I definitely like the fact that it'd be like, listen, you're mine, and then you're possessed, too. I think the possession mm -hmm. thing is really hot. Yeah, and that's so common for people who are, like, in their regular day-to-day the day to day lives dominant people yes. and they're the ones who are always calling the shots and always making the decisions and always in control. So, you know, sex is a release. Often people seek kind of the opposite of like what their life is on an everyday basis. And so that's a very compelling thing to people. So like for me, that totally makes sense. It's like the dominatrixes who say that most of their clients are like these high powered CEOs, You're right. like sex is a release for people. So a lot of times people are looking for something that is not, in their day-to-day -day. is Why something do you totally have different hmm? why do you have that like oh i love this oh it's the same exact reason okay same exact reason as you i, I was just I, like i know you're dominant I'm, you know <laughs> yeah i like in my day-to-day -day life i'm the boss i call the shots i make all the decisions like when it comes to sex like i want that release of like not having to make any decisions and not being in control and that for me is like a release so yes so I take it that's how you got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't come inside me. <laughs> no, no, stop. It's so hard. I just, I mean, honestly, it's just easier to come inside. It's just less cleanup. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, like all day. I hate like, I, plus it feels good. Like the whole, I'm in the moment, I'm in the moment, I came. Like, it's great for both of us, right? Like, what? oh, lady, but he like, just, I thought literally he was giving me some snacks and I was like, wait, they're moving. They're, <laughs> they're ladybugs. <laughs> Here's some ladybug snacks. Have a yeah, I was like, mm, yum. Yeah. Chocolate cover. Take them back. <laughs> <laughs> We're just have you ever eaten insects once? Those are disgusting. I have not eaten insects. No, but my cousins are South African. And when I went there, they made me eat, uh, chicken hearts and uh, I think sheep eyeballs. I thought you noticed that I haven't eaten during sex. I'm like, I'm just going to with the family. He fits in great. <laughs> Maybe that's the kind of porn he likes to watch. It's right? like people eating a bucket of chicken wings while they're having sex. Uh, Is that what you want, baby? You want to cover yourself with barbecue sauce? It's like, yeah, that, look at that all. Is that what we're missing in our lives? I mean, I'm pregnant, so I'm hungry all the time. So. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. When you guys shoot that home clip of you eating chicken while he fucks you, please send it to me. I'll do it I promise it will come your way. Oh my god! All right, Phoenix, you're amazing. This has been so much fun. I knew it would be. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure to see you. Hopefully, we'll be able to shoot together when things get back to normal. Like for Twisties, obviously, because that's the only Mind Geek brand that I'm shooting for right now. So it's amazing because I like. I'll her. Make sure. Yeah. Um, maybe I won't I'll make have sure to flip to like. a bitch. It'll be great. Maybe what? Maybe I won't have to flip a bitch. It'll be great. I, <laughs> wouldn't that be crazy if we just put you in like a normal, regular scene I'm with a girl? There's got to be some niche in there. I'm definitely yeah. going to be the mom. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I know you really, you, like, you, you really want to do a squirting scene, so I'll make sure that I request that specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Hey, everybody's got their everybody's got their thing, so I get it. Wait, do you oh like squirt? God. I just have to ask before we finish. No. Okay. No, because I gotta clean it.
Oh, that's ah, true. Too. Afterwards. I'm sorry. I always so have to clean it up. Marcus Dupree made me squirt. And like I said, no in the scene. By the way, Mangi like literally sent me a phone call like, hey, listen, we just looked at the footage. Are you okay with what was said? What was done? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, we think it was overly like, you said no a lot. And I'm like, because I didn't want to pee all over the place. Like I pee yeah. things because of this. I cleaned up every ounce of squirt on that set because I refused to have somebody else picking up my biofluids. Like, no, that's disgusting. Uh, Why are you guys being so fucking rude? That's very nice. Yeah, I always clean up the squirt. Uh, I'd be like, yeah, I, be like me. No squirt scenes. You'd be great. I feel like I don't have that kind of power in my life. <laughs> Come on, just tell them. Say, Phoenix said I can't do squirt scenes anymore. Yes, okay. All right, that, then it might fly. See? Oh, my gosh. You know All right, I am... <laughs> Phoenix said, well, Phoenix said, well, Phoenix said, I'm like, I didn't really say that, but whatever. Fine. Go for it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Um, Phoenix, thank you so much. It was so wonderful to see you. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? Uh, they can find me at PHX Squadron on Instagram, at P Marizzle on Twitter, and then OnlyFans.com forward slash Phoenix Murray, and of course, Browsers.com. The world's fantastic. <laughs> And uh, you can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And obviously, uh, to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Also, go check out my website that I just kind of revamped. We're adding to our blog a lot. So that's being updated frequently. Holly Randall Unfiltered.com. Sign up for our newsletter. We have all kinds of cool um monthly like giveaways and we're doing like a bombshell of the month now so go check us out love it phoenix once again you're amazing thank you so much love you guys bye